Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about how we can integrate Microsoft Fabric and Azure Databricks. Uh, both the products can work with the Spark engine at the backend, and Spark engine uh, can can work with the Delta format. As we know, the common data format that we have in Microsoft Fabric is a Delta format. So with this kind of similarity, it becomes really easy for us to integrate both the products together. So let's think of a use case why we should be integrating both the product, right? So let's think of a use case where um, you know we are doing sort of data, you know, bit of data engineering in uh, in in Azure Databricks. We have transformed the data, and now we would like to visualize the data. Power BI is the base tool in the market where you know we can do the visualization. What used to happen before? So before you know we used to copy that data into a serving layer, like we used to keep the data fast uh, as a as a delta format in databricks and then you know we used to move that data into our into some serving layer hence we used to have two copies of the data but now introduction of uh, you know microsoft fabric and microsoft fabric is compatible with delta format what we can do we can directly write the data from azure databricks notebook into the microsoft fabric one leg or we can have an intermediate adls gen 2 so let's discuss about these two options in detail about the information that I would be discussing in this video, I have already documented it in this blog post. So um, I'm just going to paste the link in the video description so that it would be easy for you to follow. We are going to talk about two options. In option one, we basically have the ADLS Gen 2 as an intermediate storage, where in option two, the database is going to write the data directly to uh, one leg. Uh, it's, it's going to be a very short video. Um, you know, there are like you know a couple of states, steps that we need to follow. Uh, uh, let's let's jump into the demo. Let's just try to understand the data flow that we have. We got a Databricks workspace where I am already running some data engineering script. Now the output that I got from the data engineering script, I got it in an ADLS Gen 2, and this ADLS Gen 2 is inside you know my Azure subscription. How do we connect this Databricks to the ADLS Gen 2 from using the mount point and the service principle? Now I got a Microsoft Fabric, and here in this use case, I'm using the Microsoft Fabric as the data analytics and data visualization tool. Now I, I created a uh, you know analytical workspace and a lake house, and then what we are going to do, we are going to create a shortcut and use the service principle for the authentication to connect to that external ADLS Gen 2 to our existing Microsoft Fabric lake house. Now once we got this link link created. From the Power BI, you know, we would be able to uh, see the data in in direct leg mode. So this is the option one. So in the options two, what we basically have, we again have the Azure Databricks, and we are running the data engineering, engineering scripts there. And then we got a Fabric tenant, and here we are introducing one leg. So one leg we can just think of is a big ADLS Gen 2 that is given to an organization. All the workspaces that we are creating in in one or organization or a tenant that is basically kept in that ADLS Gen 2. We already have the analytical workspace and there we have a lake house called analytics. And then, then you know, this is a very interesting one. You know, we are going to get one landing workspace. Uh, and this landing workspace, inside that landing workspace, what we are doing, we are creating a lake house staging. Since it's a, in public preview right now, whatever the access that we can give to any account that is in the workspace level. So that means whenever we provide some account access to one lake house you know it automatically gets access to all the artifacts or all the data that we have inside that workspace now knowing that you know service principle is is like you know i outside to the microsoft fabric and that service principle would be needing a right access to our workspace it would be better you know if we can segregate uh, the access level from our original you know from the reports or the analytical store that we are creating in microsoft fabric that is the reason that is the reason why we have segregated this landing workspace separately where we are going to give full access to the service principle so we are going to create a shortcut from that you know landing workspace to our from that lake house staging to our analytical uh, you know lake house there will not be any kind of you know performance issue because the the underlying storage is same it is basically sitting on top of the one big you know adls gen2 account right so there will not be any performance problem, but at the same time, what we were able to do, we could segregate the access level. So now, the service principle that I am using in Databricks that doesn't have direct access over the lake house analytics. 
So uh, here's my favorite environment. So I'm, I am I have caught two uh, lake houses. One is LA staging and another one is LH analytics. Now these two lake houses are uh, in separate workspaces. So for example, LA staging, uh, this is currently in a different workspace. So this is in the you know staging workspace and LH analytics is in the fabrication workspace. For the option one, uh, where we need the intermediate ADLS Gen 2, we do not need you know both the workspaces uh, uh, as, as I have explained um, in the diagram, right? So first let's, uh, let, let's look into the option one. So let me just get into the Databricks environment. Now here what I have already done, um, so let me just comment out this. It's a very simple code that I have. So let me just comment out this one. So I'm just reading one sample data and I'm just writing it to the uh, ADLS Gen 2 that I have. So let me just run this. All right, so the execution is successful. So now this data is present as a Delta table in a ADLS Gen 2, which is external to Microsoft Fabric and external to uh, Databricks as well. This is the analytics, analytics workspace that we have. Now, for this case, as I was explaining, we do not need any extra uh, workspace. I can directly attach that Delta table uh, as a table in my Fabric Lake House. So for that, what I'm uh, going to do, I can just get into this table section and then I can just create a shortcut. So I just need to provide uh, the information from where Fabric is going to read the data. For that, I just choose Arial as Gen 2 because this is the source type that I have. So here in this shortcut, like you know, we need to provide uh, uh, the the URL of the ADLS Gen 2 where we basically store the data lake. So let me just provide that. So it would be in the format of HTTPS. So yeah. So as we can see, it it was able to detect what uh, one connection that was already created using this URL. So since I have already created this connection before, so it was coming. Now how to connect? So basically, we need to provide. So if we just give some other name here. Right, so you know we can just provide the service principle, and then we can provide the tenant ID, service principle, client ID, and secret. And using this, um, you know, using this service principle details, we would be able to authenticate to the ADLS Gen 2. So for now, uh, I'm just going to reuse the connection that I have already created. So I'll be just going to the next, and then uh, we need to provide the location or the container name from where I would like to receive the shortcut data. Now remember, like here, we are just creating the table. So what we need to do, we need to provide the full path of the table so that it will just go and can find the Delta transaction log and the other, you know, uh, those small parquet files and can show us the uh, uh, data as a table. So let me just provide that. So this is the container name. And then I'm just going to provide the path where I have the Delta table. So let me just put this table from DBK option one and let's create it. We can see we can we are able to see the data and that is directly coming from that external ADLS Gen 2. We'll now move to the option two. In option two, what we had, we basically had two uh, uh, you know workspaces. Uh, the LA staging workspace is going to connect um, uh, two databricks directly. That did now. The SPN that we have created, uh, you know, that SPN is going to have access only to this workspace. It's not going to have access to any other works. So first, let's create the Delta table for option two. So we'll go to the uh, to the script and we'll just comment out this one. Yeah. So if you look at here, we what we are doing, we are just sending the data to a mount point, and this mount point we have created. Uh, you know, using the script. And if you look at the source, you know, this is how uh, we need to define the source. So we need to have AV, AVFSS and then we need to provide the workspace name where we would like to send the data. And we need to provide this FQDN at the end. Uh, this SPN that we have, this SPN should be having contributor or owner access in this workspace where we are sending the data. So I think we're good. So we can just send this data to this workspace. So let me just run this. We'll now move to the LA staging. So let me just go to the LA staging. The first and thing that we need to do, we need to refresh this and need to see whether the folder is folder has arrived or not. I think this is the folder where we were writing this data. All right, the next thing that we need to do, we need to attach the uh, table, right? So we can just create this new shortcut and we can provide this Microsoft one leg option since the data is already present in our one leg. So let me just provide this Microsoft one leg option 
and then we need to provide the lake house uh, where we have set the data. So for us, this is the LA staging lake house. And then we can just directly go to the file section and we can just, you know, take the root level. So uh, the root level is like the parent level of this delta log folder. So this is the parent level. So the parent folder, we are, we are taking this folder. And let me just create this table. All right, so now we got the data. Now we'll quickly move to our analytical uh, workspace where we would like to uh, do the uh, you know reporting or analytics on top of that data that we have received in uh, the, the different workspace. So here, what, what we are going to do, we are in a different analytics workspace. So we have two options. We can either attach this LA staging workspace here, or we can do one thing. We can just create one more shortcut, right? So I'll just create one more shortcut and I can just give LA staging here. Now, instead of file, this time I'm just going to give the table because you know we have already created the table so let me just give this table so you know we are chaining uh, you know different lake house tables together right so let me just create this now we got we got this two table so let me just get, get into the sql endpoint and look at the count of the tables um, of the data that we have in both the tables right so that we will um, we'll just write the table uh, from the database and we'll look into the count whether you know the correct count is reflecting here or not Okay, so we basically have option two at the uh, first and option one. So let me just run this. Okay, so we have we got the same count. Now what we're going to do, we are going to just write the data one more time here. So let me just uncomment this section. So it's done. And let me come here and just look into the count. So we got the same data, right? So let's do, um, let's go one more step forward. Now we got this data. We would like to create the Power BI report and we want that Power BI report to refresh near real time, right? And that, that is where we are going to use the direct lake storage mode of Power BI. So for that, we will we'll quickly get into the lake house and then we'll just create one more Power BI data set. And we're just going to take this two. You can just give a name. Uh, next that you know we are just creating one more uh, report here so we have just clicked the new report we got this two table it's very simple we are going to get two card so let me just take one more card and for that we are going to take the option one count so we got the same count let me just save this report And let me just move into Databricks one more time. And I'm just going to insert a few more records. It's just going to come here and just refresh this to see if the data is reflecting the correct count or not. Yeah, so now we can see like, you know, option was option one, I believe it was little lag uh, compared to the option two. That was just because option two is reading the data from one leg, uh, but option one, uh, you know, uh, was reading the data from an external ADL Gen2. So there is going to have some lag. The only reason is that one leg is native to fabric, hence network latency will not be there, right? We can just do the testing one more time. So let me just do. Okay, we have just written 21,000 more. And let, let me just refresh the data and we can see that, you know, the data has arrived, right? So, so this is how, uh, you know, uh, using these two techniques, we can uh, basically bring the data from, um, you know, Databricks and, uh, and in, from the Databricks notebook, we can directly write the data to our, you know, one leg. And once we got the data in the one leg using different fabrics compute, uh, we can do, you know, re-engineering on the data. We can transfer the data or we can visualize the data. I hope that, you know, this is helpful for you. And I, I, I believe it, it might be helping you in implementing your use case. Thank you so much for watching.